Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Sinus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Today, let's talk about Cormac Lehane classification. This is a score, a grading system for the airway management. If you want to intubate, this video is part of a bigger lecture on my YouTube called Airway Management in my anesthesiology playlist. An anesthesiologist who cannot manage the airway is like a mechanic who cannot change oil. Let's go back to square one. Medicine is about ABCs, the airway, breathing, and circulation. Hey, medicosis, I noticed a small mole on the patient's left toe. Oh, shut up. You first focus on the ABCs, airway, breathing, and circulation. If you do not get your ABCs right first, the patient is gonna die while you keep arguing about the border irregularity of the freaking nevus. And here are the 10 commandments of airway management. This is good for surgery, it's good for emergency medicine, it's also good for anesthesia. Because a good rule is a good rule. It's not gonna become a bad rule just because you change departments in the freaking hospital. Rule number one, if the patient is conscious and speaking in a normal tone of voice, the airway is open as of this moment. This can change in the next second, so always be careful. If you have an expanding emphysema or hematoma it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, it can close the airway in the next minute. Thou shall secure the airway now before it's too late, baby. Rule number three, if the Glasgow coma scale is less than eight, you shall secure the airway runner. Bah, bah, bah. Oh, shut up. Secure it now. If the patient's breathing is noisy or gurgly, gur, 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 this is not cool. You should intervene right away. Secure the airway now. What if I suspect that this patient has a cervical spine injury or atlantoaxial subluxation? Thou shall secure the airway now before addressing the cervical spine injury. And you have two options. The first option is hard. You can secure and fix the head and avoid hyperextension, and then you endotracheally intubate. This is for the pros. Or you can do the easier out, which is intubation over a fiber optic bronchoscope. The problem is this takes a lot of time. So if this is an emergency, fiber optic is not an option. Assuming that this is an emergency situation, Rule number six, location, location, location. I sound like a real estate agent. If you're outside the hospital, thou shall secure the airway via cricothyroidotomy or intubation. But if you are in the hospital in the emergency room, thou shall secure the airway via rapid induction and endotracheal intubation. What if the patient has some serious facial injury and this is interfering with my intubation capabilities? Thou shall tracheate or cricothyroidotomy cricothyroidate. Tracheate is tracheostomy, cricothyroidate is cricothyroidotomy. If your patient is younger than 12 and you cannot intubate, thou shall tracheate. Try to avoid cricothyroidotomy. Most doctors are reluctant to do this in young kids because their vocal cords, their larynx are still growing. Infants, in general, are problematic. Why? The tongue is relatively large, the epiglottis is floppy, and the larynx is more anterior. Where is the narrowest part of the larynx? It's below the vocal cords. Number 10. Pregnant women, in general, are difficult to intubate. Why? Gravid uterus is pushing the diaphragm upwards, decreasing the FRC. What the flip is the FRC? Functional residual capacity. Go to my pulmonology playlist because I have video about spirometry and the pulmonary function tests. The gravid uterus is pressing on the stomach, increasing the risk of aspiration. Oh, what's, what's aspiration? Aspiration is something that was not intended to go to the trachea, going into the trachea. Something could be from the mouth, it could be from the esophagus, from the stomach. When this happens to you while well, you're awake, this is happens, uh, let's say you are laughing while eating. <coughs> Why are you doing this? To prevent aspiration. Next, large breasts because of estrogen makes laryngoscopy more difficult. Also, there could be some airway edema. If you want to add commandment number 11, obesity is a risk factor. Obesity makes it difficult to intubate. So if the patient is morbidly obese, think of plan B before thinking of plan A. Airway technique, here's the deal. 
First, you go with mask ventilation. If you can maintain the patient mask ventilation, this is every anesthesiologist's dream come true. But unfortunately, it's sometimes it's not enough. Then you go to the next step. Next up is the tube. Of course, you have seen it before. The endotracheal tube. You intrude the tube through the mouth. It's called orotracheal or through the nose called nasotracheal and ends up in the trachea. And this is how you make the patient breathe artificially during the freaking surgery. Can I use a laryngoscope? You can use it. Can you use a stylet? Yup, if you need it. What if this is hard? This is a difficult patient, difficult to intubate. Now it's time to shift to other techniques. So we go from this to this to this. Try the fiber optic bronchoscope or the fiber optic endotracheal intubation. Okay, you can do it orally or nasally. And here is the unique thing about fiber optic. You can do it even when the patient is awake. And this luxury is not available for endotracheal intubation. The problem with fiber optic is that it takes a lot of time. And if you remember physics, fiber optic tubes depend on the character of light known as full reflection. This is how you get fast speed internet. If it's difficult to intubate the patient, you have other options such as retrograde tracheal intubation or blind nasotracheal intubation. Then you have supraglottic airway devices such as the famous LMA. Also you have the ETC and others. And then if the bleep hits the fan and I cannot get the tube from above, I get a pierce through the patient's skin. And this is cricothyroidotomy or tracheal jet ventilation. Which one is better? Most of the time it's the cricothyroidotomy. Hey medicosis, is there a way to try to guess and predict if this patient is going to be easy to intubate or difficult to intubate? Sure. We have two systems of classification. The first system is called melampathy classification. What are we looking for? We're looking here. Look at this. This is the oropharynx. You're looking at the oropharyngeal opening. In class one, it is wide open, baby. Like when the anesthesiologist sees Malampati class one, the anesthesiologist is going to leave the patient, go to another room and literally start dancing. Yay, I got class one. Then class two, it's getting narrower. Class three, even narrower. Class four, you can't even see it. That's not good. Next system of classification is the Colmic Lahane classification. What are we looking at? Are we looking at the oropharyngeal open? No, 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 shut up. This is not the patient's mouth. This is the patient's vocal cords. And this is the vocal cord aperture. You're looking through the larynx and into the trachea. In grade one, oh, look, look at this. Everything is wide open. When the anesthesiologist sees this, oh my goodness, he's getting aroused. Then grade two, it's getting narrower and narrower, and you can't even see the opening. If this happens, the anesthesiologist goes to another room, starts weeping, crying, sprinkling some dust particles on his head, tearing apart his white coat, sitting shiva, and asking existential questions like, what is the purpose of life anyway? One patient, three axes. So here are the three axes. Oral axis, looking in the mouth. Okay, it's going this way. Pharyngeal axis is going to the pharynx. There is nasopharynx, there is oropharynx, there is laryngopharynx. And last, there is the laryngeal axis. Your job is to align them like a freaking mechanic. John F. Kennedy once said, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Beautiful. Medicosis says, don't assume that the main cause of the adverse outcome is the, your inability to place the endotracheal tube. That's not the main problem. The main problem is failure to oxygenate, failure to ventilate, and failure to prevent aspiration. This is the big deal. Is there a difference between oxygenation and ventilation? Absolutely. Ventilation happens first, then oxygenation is next. Ventilation is to get the air into the alveoli. And when the oxygen is in the alveoli, we call it P, big A, O2. Then after this, diffusion is going to happen. And the oxygen is going to leave the alveoli and go to the blood. And when it goes to the blood, first, it is freely floating in the blood. And we call this P, small a, O2. Then it jumps on the hemoglobin and this is SAO2. And then the hemoglobin is going to give the oxygen to the tissue. And that's oxygenation. Of course, we have minute ventilation and alveolar ventilation. And please watch my pulmonology playlist to learn more. The pulse oximetry can help you assist oxygenation, but not the ventilation. 
What are the complications of tracheal intubation? Lots and lots of complications. During intubation, while the trachea is in place or after extubation. During intubation, oral trauma, dental trauma, aspiration, hypertension, tachycardia, myocardial infarction. While the trachea is in the place, esophagus. Oh, I hit the esophagus. Oops, I am in the endobronchial tree. Wow. Tracheal tube obstruction, tracheal tube cuff leak, pulmonary barotrauma, pressure trauma, nasogastric distension, axonal disconnection between the tube and the breathing circuit. That's not fun. This is like cutting the cord. Accidental extubation like an absolute doofus. After tracheal extubation, the patient can aspire. You can get pharyngitis, laryngitis, laryngospasm, laryngeal ulceration, laryngeal edema, tracheitis, tracheal stenosis, vocal cord dysfunction, dislocation of the arytenoid cartilage. Everything has failed. The bleep has hit the fan. It's time to pierce the patient's skin, pierce the patient's subcutaneous tissue, pierce the freaking trachea or cricothyroid cartilage. If you like this video, you will adore my antihepatics course available at medicosisperfectionalis.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.